We're live. Uh, welcome, tribe. Today, we're talking about how to get more flexible again, and we are continuing our seven biggest breakthroughs to flexibility and mobility. Uh, the big one is going to be revealed today. This is by far the most profound breakthrough or lesson that we learned that delivered the biggest breakthrough. We're going to uh, take it out on the gym floor and demonstrate a few ways that you can actually implement this and execute to get the best results. It's a fantastic and really quite essential tip to getting flexible. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. So we've talked about uh, the four principles so far have been how to implement slightly different variations of stretching to what people might be used to, implementing isometrics, eccentrics, loaded stretching, mobility, the differences between the two. Yesterday we spoke about 10 tools that we use in our toolbox as resources to create more of a variety, to, uh, to um, in introduce new stimulus because certain things work better for certain areas of the body. And uh, just like strength training, you can plateau with your flexibility training and not see very good results. In fact, and I've said this in many, uh, many other videos and blogs before, Stretching is a very, uh, or mobility training and, and, and the, the, the goal of gaining flexibility is much less linear the progress that you receive than strength training. Strength training is pretty straightforward. If you want to sort of gain strength, you can, you can always load up more weight, you can periodize your programming to uh, undulate between hypertrophy and strength phases, different things like that. But with mobility, tra and, and usually you'll see a nice linear progression with that unless you get injured and it, and it drops down. But with flexibility, you can often feel like you're just beating your head against a brick wall try, um, you know, for millimeters of improvement and sometimes even go backward because when you stretch hard, you'll have DOMS the next day and you'll feel less mobile, less flexible, and it's sort of back and forth, back and forth. It's quite difficult. And often you'll go for, for, for months at a time without seeing much progress at all, and then have huge improvements almost overnight where the body, as I've said over and over again, breaks down an inhibitor in an area like a joint and you just sort of go, oh wow, I can go there now. Uh, I've found that I've stretched for like um, periods of time really, really hard, um, worked on mobility and flexibility drills, for months at a time and then seen huge increases after I've taken like a week off or something like that. So it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's I think it's harder to work for flexibility than it is for strength. The biggest breakthrough that we've had to date was the point where we decided, okay, enough's enough, we are injuring ourselves or we're feeling like we've hit a glass ceiling with our movement progression, we have to up our flexibility game and we started to treat stretching as a workout. So it wasn't uh, any more just something we did if we had time. It wasn't any more something we did when we were warming up or cooling down from our real workout, which was strength training. It was now considered a standalone workout to increase flexibility. And that produced a massive breakthrough. When you think about it, it's pretty obvious. You know, you, you focus more attention on something and it improves. Uh, but for us, it was, it, was, it was a really, really big mindset shift because we had, up until that point, really only uh, stretched outside of the, you know, time that we'd allocated to training. And it was usually for small, sporadic uh, periods that we did it and focused on it. And uh, it sort of, initially it was really difficult because it took a huge chunk of our time away from strength training. And as a result, it compromised our strength, you know, because we, the more you um, move towards something, the more you move away from something else. So it took us a few years to sort of um, create a system and a strategy that allowed us to uh, continue progressing evenly in both. The first thing I'll say is it's probably uh, important to really, really get clear on what your primary goal is. You know, if you're uh, if you're really tight, if you're 
really, really stiff and you feel like it's hard to get into a deep squat, it's hard to get into a handstand because you've got a banana back because your shoulders are compromised, you injure yourself or feel discomfort when you overhead press, barbells, things like that, uh, it may be even when you pull up, then you need to probably prioritize mobility because you've got restrictions there that are causing a, a, a bit of unwanted wear and tear or limitation in movement. In that case, it should be easy for you because, you know, um, in strength and conditioning, you can't ride two horses with one ass. You prioritize one thing, get it done, and then move on to something else. Uh, now, you'll, you'll come to a point, though, where your strength and flexibility are not compromised. You, you, you feel strong, you feel robust, you feel mobile, and you're going to need to figure out a system of how to fit it all together to in continue improving or worse, not go backward in one of those two areas. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we'll get uh, Richie ready to go out on the gym floor and I'll show you how a few little hacks that we use to, um, to execute this and to, uh, and to fit it all together because that's the most important thing. You gotta make sure that you are uh, not compromising your strength to gain flexibility or to maintain flexibility. And you've also got to make sure that you're making the most of every minute that you spend in the gym. So just tell me when you're ready to rock, Rich. Yeah. We're, we're good to go? Yeah. All right, let's head out. Uh, Rad's uh, actually being interviewed right now on a, a podcast for someone over in America. So we're going to cruise through there. If we swing around the camera here, my lovely partner in crime has just walked in. Hello. Kalisha and uh, my son, Elijah down here. Hey buddy. Hey. All right. Let's head out onto the gym floor. So we actually, we actually have, um, I'll try to be a little bit quiet because we do have, just show, show Rad over there. He's, uh, he's, he's gunning away in the, uh, in the front desk. We are very, very, uh, like time allocated here at Unity. We have like time block periods throughout the whole day, especially uh, Rad and I, and it's like small periods of time that we can fit things in. Just jump around over here. So what we, what we create for our tribe is uh, we have a, a loaded mobility routine that we follow, which is done in between sets. But this only occurs once we've gone once we've hit baseline, and this is super important, baseline for us is the minimal standard that you need to hit to be able to deep squat. I'm wearing my crappy pants today, so it's going to be hard for me to demonstrate this. But we need to be able to hit a squat nicely without getting that butt wink at the bottom, which is usually when you go past parallel, if the glutes are tight, they pull the, the, uh, the lower back through and you get that unwanted movement in the lumbar. There's a lot of evidence to prove that uh, flexion is okay, but under load, if that occurs, it's not okay. It delaminates the spine and it causes a lot of, um, uh, a lot of problems, especially when we're lifting super, super heavy squatting, deadlifting, things like that. When we go beyond like, I guess, body weight lifts, you want to really be trying to lock that down. So, what we do first of all is we've created an 18 minute stretching routine which uh, I always link in the description here because it's an amazing program that you guys can grab and that helps people get to baseline. It's a standalone workout, 18 minutes long and that is usually prioritized in the early stages of people's training to make sure that, they are, um, uh, that, that they're achieving all that. Baseline in the shoulders where we can get the shoulder above the head where the thoracic spine can move to allow uh, our, our shoulder to actually go past vertical um, where we can get the hips and the knees and the ankles down into that deep squat position so people are not compromised. Mike you can go through you're fine mate. Uh, and also um, uh, you just get it's pretty much all joints. We have a, uh, an algorithm that we know um, like for instance 
if we want to be able to get into a decent squat position, we know that the hamstring needs to be able to achieve 90 degrees here quite comfortably. We also need to be able to achieve 90 degree internal rotation in the hip. We need to be able to achieve a certain level of um, flexibility in the hip. Glutes need to be able to achieve a 90 degree this way. And that's an algorithm that's been put together, not by us, that was put together by strength coaches for the last sort of 100 years. And, and uh, Richard, myself and Rad can pretty much now determine whether someone has achieved those variables based on looking at movement patterns. And we know that if someone is not able to squat down or, or do certain movements, we pretty much know exactly where to look to improve, which helps us. It gives us a bit of a blueprint to follow and stick to. Once we've achieved all of those, then we need to figure out how to maintain it because as we gain strength, if all we do is squat every day, heavy, 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 all we do is deadlift every day, heavy, 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 many of the um, uh, calisthenics movements that we practice require protraction in the shoulders. So if we're always holding that protraction really hard, it's pretty much like the, the, the bad posture that you get when you're working on a computer. That will over time affect our structure. Again, you know, remember we adapt to our environment. I've spoken about that in an early vlog. So what we want to do is as we're training, we want to be opening the body and lengthening the body and stretching the body. That's super, super important. And that's when the loaded mobility program comes into play. So I'll say that again, I'll reiterate. First of all, we want, we want to prioritize getting the baseline. And as I said in the studio before, guys, if you are compromised, if you cannot, um, how can I demonstrate this? In my opinion, if you cannot squat deep with a barbell above your head like this, then your shoulders are compromised or your um, uh, structures are compromised. If you can't behind the head press with no uh, restriction, then your shoulders are compromised. There's something going on there, posturally or um, uh, environmentally at adapted, you will have the shoulder not sitting optimally. And when you start to load up, I mean, this is light, this is only a 20 kilo bar, but it's going to cause problems. If you try to hand balance, you're going to end up banana backing or really stressing the shoulder. And quite frankly, you shouldn't be upside down. If you can't, if you can't do this with a barbell behind your head, this is 20 kilos. I weigh 85 or 86 kilos. What business do I have loading my shoulders up with 86 kilos if I can't do it with 20 kilos? You know, it makes sense, right? So our priority is absolutely, if you feel like your structures are compromised, if you can't demonstrate this stuff, if you can't sit comfortably in a squat, we have a squat challenge for our tribe where they've got to do 30 minutes of squatting like this every day. Uh, if you can't do that comfortably, then your hips and your, your, the, the mechanics down here are compromised. You shouldn't be squatting super heavy with a barbell yet. It's just, all you're going to do is create wear and tear in the joints and your training life and your health will be compromised over time because of that, you know. So focus on flexibility when you first come to the gym. Get yourself to that baseline. Get a, a workout like the 18 minute routine that you can do every day and then over a, a three to six month period, you'll hit all those baselines and you'll be able to uh, do all these lifts uncompromised. Once you've achieved that level, we move to loaded flexibility. And it's very important to understand that when we're doing loaded flexibility, we do not stretch the working muscle. So let's say hypothetically, I'm doing a bench press and uh, it's a bench press day. So I'm pressing, doing my bench press during my working sets. We don't want to stretch anything to do with the shoulder or chest. And most likely if you're doing a bench press day, the majority of strength programming will have you doing agonist antagonist movements. Not always, but most of the time meaning that you may be grouping this with a bent over row or a seated row or something like that, depending on the style of training that you do, uh, then you don't want to do anything that's stretching the back because you'll be compromising the strength. You're asking your body to do two totally different things in the same workout, which usually doesn't work very well, okay? 
But what we can do is we can focus on stretching the lower extremities. So during our pressing movements here, we will group that with a loaded hamstring stretch where we're doing what's called a single leg good morning. I'm using my body weight to stretch my hamstring. Does that make sense? Then we can do it, we, we could also group it with a loaded glute stretch where we do what's called the active pigeon where we're loading that hip using my body weight. Loading the hip using my body weight. And those two stretches, we could also stretch the hip flexors, we could also stretch the calves, they're not going to compromise the strength of my bench press. And they're also going to maximise the efficiency of my workout because rather than sitting here twiddling my thumbs while I'm resting, uh, those have got very low neurological demand, so they're not going to compromise and affect the strength of my, uh, of my bench press. Uh, if they do, it's so minimal. And if you weigh up the gain versus the, um, the, the drop in recovery that you might get, it's, it's, the, the gain is far superior. So you would definitely say that it's worthwhile doing it. Uh, so that's really the big take home. Um, once you hit baseline in your flexibility, once you can squat without restriction, once you can overhead press without restriction, uh, you can internally rotate the hips, shoulders without restriction, then you've got to fit it all together in a workout that's going to maximise time so that you make sure that you either maintain and also keep gaining mobility and flexibility. We do that by using loaded mobility, uh, which I've demonstrated a few examples here. We're going to go into more depth in that over the coming weeks because we're going to break each of the types of stretching down that we do uh, and do a full show on that, Rad and I. Uh, but the most important thing to understand is once you start to combine flexibility training and strength training into the same workout, you have to do opposing ends of the body. So the, in layman's terms, upper body strength days means that you'll be stretching lower body and vice versa. Uh, it's very, very important that you understand that. Uh, remember, this is after you've gained, you've overcome uh, a compromised range of movement. If it's whilst you're get, like, trying to um, just get to that baseline, then we always say deload the strength. Don't focus on strength, focus on flexibility and mobility. And in that case, you can sort of do both at the same time. It actually is sometimes beneficial to, to mobilize, then strengthen in the same workout. But that's only if you're not lifting heavy. If you're lifting heavy, you will compromise that strength. Anyway, uh, I will wrap up the show out here today because Rad's moved into the, um, to the booth to finish his uh, interview. Guys, I hope you got some benefit from that. Uh, we are going to double down. This is our last show for the week. We have the Easter long weekend. Uh, Good Friday tomorrow here in Australia. So we won't be in doing a show and we also won't be in doing a show on Monday morning. We'll be back on Tuesday next week. So for all of you having time off over the Easter break, uh, be safe, have a fantastic weekend. And don't go too hard on the hot cross buns and chocolate. Don't eat as much as I will. Uh, and uh, get yourself working out, all right? And uh, we'll, we will see you next week for a fantastic week of shows. We have two more shows to wrap up the flexibility blueprint uh, and the how to get more flexible series and then we're going to go deep dive into all of the 10 strategies that we use so we've got some amazing content coming up on unit tv anyway guys have a fantastic long weekend take care that i've been working on for six years that you know the body that i live in that i've been able to develop over my lifetime of training and and stuff these are all things that hey bud they they took time we are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.